What is up everybody? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 15 Ultimate Team head-to-head -head seasons game. And today, guys, what you're going to be watching is a head-to-head -head seasons game, a very, very close one. Uh, it's an older one because, uh, like I said, I, I've had some issues with uh, actually being able to even play these games. Uh, and I didn't even really know if I really wanted to continue to upload head-to-head -head seasons games. But uh, I decided what I would do is upload the ones that I find pretty entertaining. So hopefully you guys like these as well. This is a very close game. Hopefully you guys will enjoy it. But what I want to talk to you guys about today is not the gameplay. What I want to talk to you about is the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, the, the guys who are out there making just ridiculous moves, uh, splashes all over the media, really catching everybody off guard with the things that they're doing this offseason. And honestly, I have no idea what's happening. These guys are making crazy moves. And it's, it's just blowing my mind. The first thing was that LaShawn McCoy got traded for Kiko Alonso. I mean, I didn't see this coming at all. As a fantasy football person, this one caught me completely off guard. Elite running back traded for a linebacker. I mean, I, I think it, it's going to catch a lot of people off guard, obviously. My personal opinion is that I actually kind of like this trade for the Eagles. I think that they got the better end of it, uh, given the fact that LaShawn McCoy is getting kind of... I, I shouldn't say he's getting older, but... I mean, obviously, everybody's getting older, but um, it's not like he's past the point where he's still a productive player. He definitely is still a very good running back. He could be the best running back in the league next season. I mean, he has that type of skill. But Kiko Alonso is an elite player at the linebacker position, which I personally believe is a little bit more difficult to find than it is at running back. So, personally, to me, I'm okay with that trade the only concern obviously is that Kiko is coming off of that injury last year that kept him out but in 2013 he was an elite player as a rookie so I definitely like that I'm, I'm totally fine with this trade especially when you consider the fact that they then went out there and acquired DeMarco Murray five years 42 million dollars 21 million guaranteed now Murray obviously led the league in rushing in 2014 behind that big dominant Dallas Cowboys offensive line which is it's going to suck for me as a Cowboys fan to see Murray playing in Philadelphia man like I, I really can't even hardly think of a worse place uh, for him to play as a Cowboys fan I, I don't want to see him playing there but you know it is what it is this is going to hurt the Cowboys a lot. And for the Eagles, not only is it going to help them, but it's going to hurt a division rival. So it's kind of a double bang there for them, a very positive move for them. Obviously, they gave up a lot of money to a running back, which is a questionable decision, especially somebody who has the injury history of a DeMarco Murray. But the nice thing is that they went out there and not only acquired DeMarco Murray, but they also got Ryan Matthews, who has obviously some injury concerns of his own. But you add him in there with Darren Sproles and DeMarco Murray, all three of those guys, that's a pretty lethal backfield. And if one of them gets hurt, you still have the other two to produce for you. And I don't think that they're going to see a substantial drop off between, you know, uh, a DeMarco Murray. If he goes down, then suddenly you, you have to start Ryan Matthews and Darren Sproles. I still think those two are going to be okay. They're still going to be decent enough. So to me, again, I think this is an okay move. I'm not a but I don't think it's a bad decision to go out there and get to Marco Murray and, and basically trade uh, Kiko Alonso. You basically get Kiko Alonso and DeMarco Murray and Ryan Matthews for LaShawn McCoy. I, I mean, that's basically what happened here with all those transactions. Now, the problem that I have is this next thing that happened, which was the team trading Nick Foles and a second round pick and a fourth round pick for Sam Bradford and a fifth round pick. In 21 games, Nick Foles has thrown 40 touchdowns and 12 interceptions in this Chip Kelly offense. That's almost two TDs per game with only about a half of an interception per game. Now, what I don't understand here, if you're Chip Kelly, is why you're trading a guy who has produced in your offense for a guy who might produce in your offense and is coming off of back-to-back -back seasons with torn ACLs who has never produced at the level of the guy that you're trading away. Oh, and you're also throwing in a second-round pick and an upgrade from a fifth-round pick to a fourth-round pick. It's bizarre. I, I'm blown away at that trade. I don't understand it. And if you do make that trade, you would think that you would want to give that new quarterback a pretty solid wide receiver group. Well, Jeremy Macklin's gone. Uh, he signed with the Chiefs. So now this team is sitting there with Riley Cooper and Jordan Matthews as their top two targets in the receiving game. With Darren Sproles, obviously, who's one of the best receiving backs in the league. And, and DeMarco Murray's not too shabby himself. And even Ryan Matthews is decent. But the problem is here is that this team lost their number one wide receiver from a year ago. And you're expecting that Sam Bradford's going to come in, a guy who's never really produced at an, even a high-quality level. He's been good from time to time but not like 
I, I wouldn't even say he's top 10 at any point in his career so far. So it's crazy to me that they're going to expect him to step in and run this offense and produce at a high level. It, it blows my mind. Not only that, but this team came out there and they signed Byron Maxwell for a six-year, $63 million deal, $25 million guaranteed, making him one of the highest-paid cornerbacks in the league. Now, I don't necessarily have a problem with Byron Maxwell, but paying him that kind of money when he's only been a starter for one year, to me, is a little bit crazy. I mean, Maxwell spent most of his season covering up the opposing team's second option in the passing game because Richard Sherman is obviously playing opposite him. I mean, you add in the fact that not only does he go against the number two wide receiver typically, but he was also playing on a team that had the best secondary of the safeties in the league. They have Earl Thomas and Cam Chancellor. Doesn't get any better than that. So I'm skeptical that Byron Maxwell is going to produce at a level to make him worth that type of money. But obviously, I think he was the best cornerback available to them. Um, given the whole situation with uh, with Revis and that kind of thing. I just don't think anybody else is realistic for them to sign. So, I mean, I get it to some extent. Now, what I will say is that I have absolutely no idea how all this is going to pan out. But what I tell, will tell you is that this is Chip Kelly's opportunity. He either makes this work or he's going to have a short career in the NFL. But in the meantime, as a football fan and as a fan of just guys going out there and doing things against the grain, I really like that Chip Kelly is sticking by his guns. I like that he's throwing caution to the win. It sucks as a Cowboys fan that uh, that I have to have this in my division because it could work out really, really well. But I will tell you this. I hope the Eagles go 0-16 this year. But there's part of me, honestly, that's hoping that all this craziness works out for them because I'm sick of boring off seasons. And with Chip Kelly around, I don't think that's ever going to happen again. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay. You're going to see here we're going for this onside kick. Are we going to get it? I don't know. It's looking pretty close. And no, we didn't get it. Damn. So yeah, we are going to walk out with a loss in this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye-bye.